Good morning and welcome to this Advent Sunday United Benefice Service on Sunday the 29th of November. A very warm welcome to you all from across the Benefice as we come together to join in this act of worship. A few words of thanks before we start our service. Firstly to our Archdeacon Richard Ormston for his video sermon. Thank you Richard once again for sharing your thoughts with us in this way and for contributing to our service we greatly appreciate it and as we come to the end of this period of interregnum we also want to say a warm thanks to you and the support that you've provided to many of us throughout this period. Our readers this morning are Courtney who is from Crick, Laura from Lilbourne and our prayers this morning are led by Heather from Yelvertoft. So thank you to all from the United Benefits team for leading this service this morning. And so let's start our service with our opening words. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Sing to God with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord, all you his people. The Lord's name be praised. Let's join together to sing our first hymn.
Today's epistle reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. 
But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for inviting me to be part of your act of worship on this Advent Sunday in this rather strange year. I'm going to take a look at a couple of phrases that come up in one of our epistle readings today from 1 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 9. And the first phrase I would like to look at is, I always thank God for you. Says Paul when he's writing to the church in Corinth, he says, I always, always thank God for you. I wonder if you are a thankful person. My mother is in her mid-90s and she's still good at writing thank you letters. You do anything for her, anything at all, and later on, a couple of days later, you'll receive a, a handwritten letter through thanking you for what you've done. She's a really good thank you letter writer. These days, uh, it has to come accompanied with a magnifying glass and a lot of patience if she sees what she's writing. But nevertheless, despite all the effort it takes, she has a thankful heart and she puts it on paper so that people know that she's grateful to them for whatever they've done. I wonder if you are a thankful person. Only you will know that. I don't know that from the privacy of my home. I wonder if you're thankful or I wonder if you are a moaner. Huh. That was straight, wasn't it? I wonder if you're thankful to God. And I wonder if you're thankful to God for your brothers and sisters in the faith. Because Paul says right into the church in Corinth, I always thank God for you as a church. So I wonder if you in turn thank God for your brothers and sisters. If you do, if you are a thankful person, and if you are grateful in your heart to your, for your brothers and sisters in the faith, I wonder how you show it. Do they know that you're grateful for them? Do they know that you're a, a thankful person? Do you, do you speak words of thanksgiving? Do you build up the church by showing your appreciation for those around you and showing your appreciation and gratitude to God as well? I wonder if that thankfulness kind of spills out around you for, for everyone to see. I wonder if everyone is showered in your spirit of thanksgiving. I remember years ago, I was at a, I was probably in my teens, and I was at a service station on the motorway with my brother, who was driving me somewhere or other, I can't remember, and I got a bottle of Coke, and I thought it'd be really funny to shake the bottle of Coke up, and then take the top off, put my thumb over it, and get in with the Coke. He saw what was coming and moved smartly out the way, by which point I ended up drenching the man on the bench who was sitting just behind where he was. Not a popular moment, but he was drenched in it and we all got covered one way or the other. One of the Psalms, I think it's Psalm 133, speaks about us being thoroughly drenched in the grace of God. I wonder if you are those, one of those who thoroughly drenches people in a spirit of thanksgiving, that you are known as a thankful person. And that affects the morale of everyone. In the New Testament, Barnabas is spoken of as a son of encouragement. I wonder if you are a son of encouragement to those around you. And secondly, the second thought I have for you is also from this uh, epistle. And it says, God who has called you is faithful. God who called you. Isn't that brilliant? God called you. And he's a faithful God who called you. I think that's absolutely brilliant that God calls us himself. In Jesus' day, when he walked planet earth, 
Um, some of you are going to tell me he still does. I know that. But in Jesus' day, when he physically walked planet Earth, um, those, that, those boys, it was only boys in those days, sorry, those boys who went to, Jewish boys who went to a formal education and who were the very brightest would by mid-primary school years have learnt by heart Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Off by heart. Wow. And those who are the best of the best would have gone on to what we now call secondary school and that have learnt off by heart Genesis all the way through to Malachi. That's the whole of the Old Testament off by, off by heart, word for word, verbatim, that have known the whole thing. Amazing. And then the very best of the best of the best of the best, you get where I'm going, would have gone on to be a disciple of a rabbi. And they'd have gone to the rabbi who was most in their mind, and they'd have, the rabbi would have questioned them one question after another to see their knowledge of the scriptures. On and on and on it would go. And if at the end of that questioning, this kid who was in front of the rabbi wasn't quite up to it, the rabbi would say to him, go back to your father and le learn his trade. But to the others who were the very best, who he wanted to take on as a disciple, he would say, follow me. Remember those words from Jesus to the disciples? Follow me. And so when Jesus, the most famous rabbi of his generation, walks down by the Sea of Galilee, he sees a group of fishermen. So they weren't the best of the best. They were following their father's trade. And yet he says to these fishermen, follow me. The, the most wonderful, best known rabbi of his generation saying to these fishermen, unschooled, follow me. What's he saying? He's saying, this good news I have is for everyone, not just for the elite, not just for the best of the best, but it's for absolutely everyone, including you, including me, that God calls us and is faithful to us. Wow. Two wonderful verses. I always thank God for you. Let that thanksgiving spill out of you as you give thanks also that God calls you and is faithful. God bless you. And now we say together the creed. We believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again. We believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we say together the Confession. Father Eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought and in what we have done, through ignorance, through weakness and through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of the light. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your Son to be born among us to live as flesh. As we celebrate this Advent, help us to truly prepare for your coming. Clear unnecessary clutter from our hearts and minds. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. As we continue to live in the shadow of the coronavirus, unsure of what quite what form our Christmas celebrations will take, we give thanks that you are always here, giving us unfailing love and hope. Lord, give us new vision and inspiration to share your gospel with others every day, but especially as we prepare for this coming Christmas time. Thank you that through the recent difficult months, we have had more quiet, thoughtful time 
to help us remember who and what is important in our lives. Guide us, Father, to be closer to you in all that we do. Father, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray especially for our United Benefice family. Whilst we may not be able to meet together physically, we give thanks that we can still come together to worship in your name. We thank you for all of our church families and village communities. May our homes and villages be filled with your love and the true meaning of Advent, preparation to celebrate your coming. We pray for Graham, our new rector, and his wife Judy, as they prepare to celebrate this special time, but also as they prepare for their new life in our benefice. We give thanks for Graham's appointment and pray that you will guide him. We also pray for David and Patricia as they too prepare for their new beginnings and ask that you will restore them to good health and help them to settle into their retirement. Father, hear our prayer. Caring Father, be with all who are sick, fearful and anxious at this time. We know that Christmas preparations bring additional fears and worries to some. Be near them and help them to hear the words of the angel. Don't be afraid, I bring you good news that will be for all people. Bless our doctors, nurses and care staff as they continue to care for all who are sick, whether in hospital or at home. Wrap all who are sick in your loving embrace and be ever present with those they love. Help us, Father, in our daily prayers to bring before you those in special need of your loving touch. Father, hear our prayer. Finally, Father, you know our hearts and share our sorrows. You know when our hearts are broken by bereavement. We remember with deep gratitude those who have left their mark on our lives by giving love and laughter, but have now gone before us to be with you. Lord, come ever nearer, come to rejuvenate our faith this Advent. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.